We met a lot of local people there. Um, the majority of the locals there are hippies um, in every sense of the word. Um, there is one guy, his name is Dan. He is a sand artist. He makes cool sculptures in the sand. Um, he's actually a professional, a world winner person. Um, he made sand castles almost every night. The first night we were there, there was a huge dragon with his nose lit up on fire. And then the next night, it was a smaller dragon. And then there was a face, and I think there was a sand castle, and there were turtles and all sorts of really cool things. Um, he's shown us pictures of some of the incredible th sculptures he's made. They're gigantic. Um, yeah, he's made hundreds of thousands of dollars off of his um, sand castles and whatnot. Um, the day we left on Saturday, he was actually partnering up with another sandcastle lady, and they were going to make a gigantic turtle for um, the releasing of the baby turtles into the ocean. And it was going to be probably about six feet, five inches high, and probably about 15 to 20 feet wide and long. It was going to be gigantic. and. Um, we weren't able to see it because we had to leave in the morning. In the morning, um, some other cool people that we met um, were a lot of the people we were working with. Um, they were a lot of fun. Every evening we would have um, schoolie or um, Thule of the day or Thule of the week, and Thule's are um, something. Um, are people who are too old to be schoolies and kind of want to be schoolies and they're doing something stupid so we got a lot of great laughs every evening about what stupid things people have done or drunk schoolies have done and um, some of them were like catching a mouse in um, a bunch of a girls apartment where there were about five drunk girls and there's this mouse running around and the guys went to catch it and they wanted to take pictures of it, so they lost him like three times. So it took them like two hours to catch the mouse <laughs> and finally get rid of it. And then, um, uh, like playing leapfrog with drunk kids and just like really funny random things. And then, if you were nominated as Thule of the Day, you had to wear these really <laughs> this really huge funny shirt. It was a lot of fun. Um, yeah, um, we're not allowed to go into a whole lot of detail about what we did just because of um, the media and whatnot. We're not allowed to say the organization name or and stuff like that, but um, it was a lot of fun. Um, it's amazing to see um, how other people live um, every night people were just plastered. It was um, heartbreaking to see these 17, 18 year old kids drinking and being just completely drunk and having to go to the hospital and get their stomachs pumped and put IVs in and stuff. It was just, it was really sad to see. Um, we did um, help a lot of people. We, um, our group um, in general, um, the organization, all the schoolies loved us. Um, they would constantly run up to me and be like, oh, thank you, thank you, thank you. I don't remember which team it was or who it was, but they walked me home last night, or they picked me up when I was passed out on the ground, or, oh, I was throwing up and so-and-so held my hair back and got me water, or just, like, all these, like, random things. And it was really fun to just see how just holding someone's hair back while they're puking or walking them home because there's it's dark out and they don't want to walk in the dark alleys by themselves and just little things like that how appreciate appreciated appreciative they were of us and um, we had a few um, deeper conversations about God and we got a witness to a few of the um, schoolies um, I think there were probably close somewhere between 
1,500 and 2,000 schoolies there. So there were, there were a lot of kids, um, a lot of police around. It was a, quite a safe environment. Um, there was um, police um, monitoring the majority of the town and there were ambulances constantly um, at the hub where the medical tent and stuff was. And there were just a lot of good caring people around that were helping to make sure the schoolies were safe. Um, yeah, it, it was a really great week. It was a very challenging week. We got little, wow. little sleep. We stayed in a church, and every morning when we got back, uh, we would flip the lights on, and we'd see about 20 cockroaches running across the room, and we were sleeping on that floor with cockroaches and ginormous spiders and stuff like that, and a lot of the girls freaked out about it, but... I was just like, don't look at them, don't pay attention to them, they're not going to kill you. <laughs> um, but yeah, I think we averaged somewhere between four to seven hours of sleep a night, um, or a morning. Um, we made hundreds and hundreds of pancakes and ate hundreds of pancakes and red frogs. Um, yeah, it was a, it was a really good week. Um, Byron Bay is an incredible town. If you ever get to Australia, that is one of the places you've got to go. Um, one of the days I walked to a beach near the church. It was about a 15 to 20 minute walk and I was, I went by myself and I think there were probably like maybe six other people on this ginormous beach. I went and played in the water for a little while and then I just walked home and I drip dried home in the sun, which was nice. Um, yeah, uh, we didn't see any wildlife on the way there or back, just some cows and sheep and goats and a few horses here and there. Um, I did see my first mountain. I was really excited. Um, got me a little homesick. It wasn't, it was far away, so it, I wasn't too homesick. Um, we got to see dolphins, I guess. Um, Saturday morning, we woke up at 4 o'clock. We're out of the church by 4.30, and we went to the lighthouse in Byron Bay and watched the sunrise. And we saw a couple dolphins playing in the waves while the sun was rising, and that was really, really cool to see. Um, yeah, um, it's been a great week. Um, I'm really enjoying myself here. Um, yeah, well, I got to get going, so you guys have a great time, and thanks for all your prayers and support.